If you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, I heard, I heard actually somebody speak this last week say, I hope you bring your Bibles, because uh, I might just be deceiving you. Um, but you, unless, unless you actually check the scripture, like I could be putting anything up there. So I hope you bring your Bibles here today. Um, we're going to be in Galatians 5. Uh, it's kind of the main text that I want to hit on. But we've been in a, we've been in a series, uh, this, for the last few weeks called Exponential Life. And it's all about becoming more like Jesus. And that's, that's what, that's the desire that God has for each and every one of us is that we would become more and more like Him. Amen? Like that's, that's why we are here. But for the last few weeks, I just want to kind of, kind of run through some of the things that we've been talking about. We've been talking about, Climbing, we've been talking about mountains, we've been talking about on ramps onto the highway and the pathway that God has for us. Um, we've been talking about experiencing God, the mountains and valleys and the journey and the process of, of walking out our faith, seeing the manifestation of his glory around us in our day to day. We climb, we grow in the Lord, we reach a spiritual peak or experience, and then we see another peak and we begin to, to make the climb and make the journey and continue to grow in faith. Um, don't settle for a lower spiritual peak when God has more. Don't put God in a box, but take the limits off. Amen. The absence of risk is a sure sign of mediocrity. Come on, somebody. If you can leave his presence unchanged, maybe God is just a hobby. Ooh, hey, I didn't say it. Dad said it. Come on. That's good. There's another idol you fear and serve more than God when he's just a hobby. If you can experience God but never be changed in your heart, then God is another form of entertainment. We talked about, again, highways and pathways and on-ramps, um, but God is wanting us to pursue him, to pursue him. As we draw near to him, scripture tells us that he draws near to us. Amen. And, and, and I believe so strongly, and this is really the truth of, of God's word, that God's desire is for us to be like him. Like that is, that is the will of God for each and every one of our lives. Again, so often we make it about careers or we make it about the stuff that we're going to do, but it's not about what you do, but it's how you do it. It's who you are in the doing that God desires in, in, in your life, and the will for your life. The posture and the position of your heart matters way more to God than all the different things that you may do. I'm going to rapid fire these scriptures, Eric. You ready? Micah 6, 8 says, No, O people, the Lord has told you what is good, and this is what he requires of you, to do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. 1 Thessalonians 4, 3, it is God's will that you should be sanctified. 1 Thessalonians, Thessalonians 5, 16. Yeah, I heard it. I had to say it. Sorry, I'm going to call me out. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's for you in Christ Jesus. I want to read on here. Do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. We're going to talk about sanctification today. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Amen? Amen. It's his will that we would be like him. It's his will that we would, but when people see us, that they would see Christ. Amen? Be holy like Jesus and reject sin. The person who is living the life of holiness will humbly, will be humbly aware of their forgiveness and yet diligently in seeking to eliminate any trace of sin from their lives. Chuck Colson says this, he says, holiness is the everyday business of every Christian. It evidences itself in the decisions we make and the things we do hour by hour, day by day. I think dad said this last week, if you're not pursuing holiness, your flesh may be winning. Ephesians 5, 1 through 7, or just, or sorry, just verse 1. Be imitators of God. 
Therefore, as dearly loved children and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. First Peter four or first Peter one fourteen says, As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. There's a there's a huge difference between attempting to live for God and allowing him to live in us and through us. First John two, four through six, the man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. And I, I just want to call to attention, and, I, and I'm not pushing on anyone here in this room, but I don't know about you, but there's been moments in my life and in my faith walk, especially early in my faith walk, where it was all about saying yes to Jesus, salvation. I receive you, Lord. I, 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 Lord, forgive me of all my sins. I ask you into my heart. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to live for you, right? All these things. I say this prayer. I, I pray this prayer and I walk away and I go right back to the sinful life that I was living before. And then I, and then I repent and I'm like, God, oh, God, I'm so sorry. You know, I, I made this mistake, all, all these things. And then I go right back to it again. And it, and it actually becomes this cycle of, I'm just trying to treat all of these behaviors in my life and never get to the root cause of why I'm acting in this way. It's this, it's this cycle that, that many believers go through, and, and we would call it legalism. Where all I'm looking at is what I'm doing wrong and all the things that I have to do. And it, 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 if I don't act this way, if I don't say it this way, like all of these different things. And, and we bring shame upon ourselves and we end up actually bringing shame on others in the process. Because, oh, you're not, you're not living the, the way you're supposed to live. And you, you're doing all this and doing all this wrong. And it, it's this constant fight. And the, and the enemy would love for us to stay in this constant cycle and never grow. He would, he would love for us to play church. He would love for each and every one of us to, to just play this, oh, I'm so sorry, Lord. Oh, I'm so sorry, Lord. And we should be sorry. We need to repent. But if we're not walking away from his presence changed, then something did not happen in our hearts. Something has to change. Something has to shift. Maybe we made an internal decision, and then we work really hard not to sin anymore. And, we, and, and when we read the Bible, we read the Bible for all the things we're not supposed to do, rather than look at the things that we get to do. Ooh, where my notes go? Here we go. Again, this is not the will of God for our lives. George W. Truett reminds us, he says, to know the will of God is the greatest knowledge to find the will of God is the greatest discovery and to do the will of God is the greatest achievement. And if the will of God is for us to be like him, come on, let's go. As God's Holy Spirit fills us, we should produce his fruit naturally as a result of living daily in the presence of God. We're talking about fruit here for a second. So Galatians 5, this is where we're at, uh, verses, starting in verse 16. Stay with me, okay? I'm going to read for a second. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desire of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. Aren't you grateful for the Bible? Come on. They are in conflict with each other, the Spirit and the flesh, so that you are not to do whatever you want. You are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Just, just a fun side thing for a second. It's interesting that 
dissension and disunity is up there with witchcraft and discord with immorality and impurity. Verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience or forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Amen. I just think it's so interesting. I grew up in church. I went to Sunday school. And I remember the songs, the fruits of the spirit, or love, joy, peace. There's not a song where they say like the acts of the flesh or like, like that, that wasn't a song. But we talk about the fruits of the spirit and the acts of the flesh but, but really, they are, they are one and the same. We, we like to maybe dress it up a little bit like, oh, it's fruit. But it's really the actions, the action of the Spirit. Just like we say the acts of the flesh. The fruits of the Spirit are the acts of the Spirit. It's what we see, it's what we hear, it's what we experience. When, when someone is, is moving and walking in love, I love you so much. Sorry. Had a moment. We see it. It's, it's, it's not just words. It's, it's action. And we can see it. And we, can, we can sense it and all these things, right? But we, we can also sense the acts of the flesh. What flows out of you when the Spirit is working and alive in your heart. This is an act or a fruit of the Spirit. And it's, it's not some sticker that you put on. I love the, the, what my dad was sharing last week. Like, we don't have Holy Spirit stickers that we put on. Like, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, and I can speak in tongues. And they're like, I have the gift of prophecy. Like, here's my sticker. Like, all these. Like, but, but sometimes, like, we treat the fruits of the Spirit like a sticker we have to put on. Like, it's just going to magically change everything. Like, I have anger in my heart today towards this person. Let me just, let me just like manifest love right now for them. Let me put on my love sticker really quick, right? And we try to cover up the acts of the flesh. And our flesh try to, like, it, it, it's the same thing too. Like, in, in the moments of chaos in our lives, we just go, God, just look. Let me just put on peace right now. Let me just, let, I, I just need your peace. I just need your peace. I just need your peace. And we, and we, and we say it like, like, it's, like it's just going to magically shift things. Or man, I'm falling back into these old patterns. Like, let me put on self-control. Well, then how do we, how do we walk in the fruits of the Spirit? I have, I have fun examples. I'm going to get to them here in a second, Okay. If you saw the, but again, when has this ever worked where we just can put on this thing and then we're just magically changed and transformed? And how many times, again, has the world looked at people in the church and they see the acts of the flesh, but all they see are the stickers on top of it of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Look at my fruit. Well, your fruit isn't rooted in anything, so it's rotten. I'm, uh, I kind of I shared this this morning in our, in our team meeting, but the other day I walked outside. It was like 58 degrees early in the morning. And oh, I, just, I took a, a deep breath in. And you know, you know what I just, I just felt? Maybe it was the Holy Spirit speaking to me. I took a deep breath. I'm like, oh. Hunting season. <laughs> hunting, hunting season is coming. Here we go. I have props. I have fun things here. Under the, under the curtain. And I got my hunting gear out. I, I got so excited. And I, and I had to go up in the attic and make sure that everything was good. But I got, my, I got my jacket here. Put this on, right? How do I look? 
What, what, do I, what do I look like? You can't see me. I'm camouflaged. I look warm, right? But what do I, what do I look like? A hunter, right? But how do you know I'm really a hunter? You hunt. I bring a deer back. But, 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 oh, you hit it with the car. Yeah, thanks, Jim. <laughs> I do pick up roadkill if I think it's still fresh, okay? <laughs> hey, you just got to freeze it. You can eat it later. But, man, I, I, just, just hear me for a second because, gosh, I'm already getting warm in this. I'm sweating in this thing. Also got this really cool compound bow here. This is nice, right? I can have all the gear, I can have all the equipment, but at the end of the day, when it comes time to go out and hunt, you're going to find out really quickly if I'm a hunter or not. Like, it looks, it looks really, really good to get in the camo. Like, I, I think about this too with golfing. Like, for me, golfing, half of it is about the way I dress. I mean, like, that's what it's all about. Like, I love the way my wife looks at me when I'm walking out the door, when I'm heading to the golf course. Like, and she's like, why don't you dress up for me like this? Like, what's, what's going on? You know, it's the whole, I hate to see you go, but I love to watch you exit thing, you know? Hey. The Holy Spirit and the fruits of the Spirit, they look good on you. It looks good on us as a church to walk in love, to walk in, and especially in the gifts of the Spirit and all these different things. But we so often get a bad rap because when it comes time to walk in these gifts, to live under testing, people find out really quick you're not who you dress up to be. You're, you're not all that you say you are. And there's this, there's this tension that we all have to walk in and fight in in our walk of faith. It's a battle, it's a war, and it all surrounds our heart. Right? Right? There's a tension going on in our heart because we, we can come into his presence and we can come in and encounter him and many times we can leave unchanged because we didn't allow the Holy Spirit to address our heart. We didn't, we didn't lean on him because he is a, he is a person. He's a, he's a facet of, of God, of the Trinity. And he's not lesser because he's third. He's third because he was the third mentioned in the Bible. But the Holy Spirit wants so desperately to see the, the fruits and the gifts of the Spirit in your life. But until you address the heart, it's just a Sunday school song. And there's, there's so much that he wants to, to do in each and every one of us. And, and, I, and I, again, I've got, the, I've got the bow here, and I'll probably give more example to this here in a second. But like, I got this out for the first time yesterday because I knew that I was going to bring this up on stage. I wanted to make sure I could still pull it back. <laughs> but I just got this thing restringed. There's no arrows here, okay? So don't freak out. I'm not going to point it at you or anything weird. And I'm not going to dry fire it because I don't want to break it. But again, so many of us, we, we've got all the equipment. We have the Holy Spirit. But we never actually put ourselves in a position to, to practice Like, like fruits in our lives or faith in our lives untested is really worthless. Because if I try to, in the moment, when there's a moment that God needs me to, to walk in and I haven't practiced pulling this thing back and I don't know the proper way to lean into the tension. Some of y'all are freaking out. I'm not pointing it at you. It's okay. But if, if we haven't walked in the Spirit, if we haven't leaned on the Holy Spirit in moments of, of tension, in moments of struggle, 
And we, and we think that, oh, I just gotta, I gotta manifest it. I gotta put it on all these things. Like we're never able to pull this back because we don't have the strength. Even, even though like I, I know because I've done this a while, I've leaned in, I've practiced, I've, I've been able to shoot my shot. I know the proper form to make it easy. Some of us don't have the proper form because we've never leaned into the Holy Spirit to teach us. How do I need to react in this, in this moment? How do I, like, Holy Spirit, I'm feeling something in my heart right now. I'm feeling something in my body. And it's, it doesn't feel right. Something's not right. There's something not of you that I'm sensing that I'm feeling. Holy Spirit, what is it? Like, we can have that relationship with him. Isn't that awesome? And it's not just, you don't just do it when you come to church. This is supposed to be every single day. Holy Spirit, as, as I talked about this a few weeks ago, but as we read the word of God, Holy Spirit, let this come alive to me. Would you reveal things to my heart as I'm reading this? Because so often we, we can read the word of God and it doesn't change us because we haven't allowed the Holy Spirit to let it speak to our hearts. Like so many of us, we pray and we want deliverance but really, it just takes discipline. Like, the Holy Spirit wants to discipline your heart because there's, there's things there that are so deeply rooted that it's affecting everything else. That if you got delivered in that moment and, and were set free, you can walk in that all the things, but if you don't continue to walk in sanctification in your life, if you don't continue to come to Him daily, you will fall back. Your flesh is constantly fighting in tension, in contention for your heart. Like I'm, I'm done. The, the days of my walk in faith and my walk with the Lord are completely over. Where I think like, I just, I just need to get a touch. I just, I just need, I just need this, you know, I just need everything to be perfect right now. And I just need to come in and, and have, have my moment and have my thing. Right. I'm jumping ahead of my notes here, but there's actually, there was a, a, a podcast I was listening to recently and they were interviewing a psychologist. He's a Christian psychologist, but he works with Christians and non-believers that would call themselves spiritual. Right. I'm spiritual. Right. I'm, I have a spirit, whatever. And what the psychologist is saying is that so often people will come to therapy and whatever issue that they're struggling with in their heart, if they see it as too much or if they don't really want to deal with it, they will do what's called spiritually bypassing. They will spiritually bypass the, the real root of the issue in their heart to go and do something that makes them feel good. And here's, here's the cool part. Like, the, the things that you would actually do in the, in these moments, in these instances, are, are, are not bad. It's creating a fabricated space for your flesh and your spirit to kind of commune together. But in reality, it's your flesh that's winning. And your spirit only wins for a moment. Let me just give you an example here, okay? Maybe I need to go on a spiritual retreat. I need a vacation, right? Or, or you know what? I need, I need multiple therapy sessions throughout this week because I, I, you know, I really got to deal with this. I really got to talk to somebody. I need a sabbatical. Or maybe it's playing video games. I just need like an escape. I just need to kind of step away from reality right now. And I, or I just need to veg. I just need to watch, you know, 10 episodes of Netflix back to back to back really quick. It's... It's seeking after an escape, but really it's seeking after control in your flesh. And here's, here's, here's what's crazy. Some of these things, and, and the, the psychologist actually said this too, like some of the things that we use to spiritually bypass our own heart, they're not bad things. Like he said, going to church was on the list too. We can go to church, we can go to conferences, we can go to small groups, we can sing the songs, we can cry. 
We can serve. Maybe we need to rest and relax and all these different things. We consume content. But all of it is, is really pleasing to the spirit, but it's, it's pleasing to our flesh. And the moment that it stops being fulfilling, or the moment that things begin to shift in a direction that my flesh doesn't like, this person said this about me, or I didn't like the way they did this, and cynicism begins to come into our heart, we begin to say, well, these are spiritual things. These are, these are good things, so why wouldn't God want me to, to do this? Or why, is, why are all these bad things happening? Again, we try to create this fabricated reality, this, this sort of insulated, isolated faith walk of avoidance so that we can feel good. Again, I, I love watching Netflix, you know? If I'm, if I'm resting, if I'm chilling, like, I'm going to watch Netflix and chill, you know? Netflix and chill. I'm, well, with my wife, usually, but, you know. And there's nothing wrong with that. The problem is when it begins to shift into this place of I am not addressing some things in my spirit, in my heart, and I'm just leaning into the things that make me feel good. Again, there's this tension. Are y'all, are y'all following me? There's this tension in our hearts today that we need to begin to stop and recognize and lean on the Holy Spirit and ask him, should I be doing this right now? God, do I really need a spiritual retreat or vacation? Or am I just running from something in my heart? Like, do, do I, do I really need the, this, all these therapy sessions and all this stuff? Like, again, I love therapy. I've been in therapy. Like, therapy saved my life. Literally. But am I making this my all and my everything, avoiding the deeper rooted issue that's going on in my heart? And, and the simplest way that I know to address that is to ask the Holy Spirit. It's as simple as that. Like, you don't need another prophetic word. I don't know about you, but most of the prophetic words that I've gotten, especially here in Franklin, have been very positive. Like, don't change anything. Like, God is with you, you know? Like, and that's all good. Some of the best prophetic words I've ever gotten are like, you gotta, you gotta fix this. Just, just throwing that out there for, for all y'all in, the, in this faith journey. But there's nothing wrong with any of these things, but it is wrong when we Jesus juke our way out of God moving in our hearts. Allowing the Holy Spirit to do something real in us. Again, faith untested cannot be trusted. And if we can recognize in moments when we're having to walk in faith, when we're having to walk in the fruits of the Spirit, and when we recognize that my flesh is bowing up right now, to what God is wanting to do in this situation, that's a, that should be a sign right there to lean into the Holy Spirit and be like, what's off? Like, let, seriously, let's be practical today. Let's be men and women of God today. If there are moments where you're feeling something that is described as the flesh, maybe it's a moment that we need to lean into the Lord and be like, what is this? What do I need to repent of? What do I need to surrender? What do I need to lay at your feet? Because if we're going to continue to become like Christ, we have to address the heart. Because it's out of our heart that the fruits begin to to flow out. And so if there's moments where things that are not of the Spirit are coming out of us, like, do we just keep pressing forward and Hope that everything works out, or do we stop in the moment and say, God, what what needs to change? And here's what's great. It's okay. Like, we're called to live righteous, but none of us are perfect. There is a grace. There is a mercy. His kindness leads us to repentance. But we have to test the Spirit's we read this verse a lot. It says, First John 4, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. When I read this verse, I don't know if you got it, Eric. 
First John 4. Yeah. When, whenever I read this verse, I, I get hung up on the false prophets bit. And I'm just like, there's false prophets out there, right? But when I really read it and I let the Holy Spirit speak to me, don't believe the spirits. Test the spirits. I feel like the, the fingers get pointed back to me. Have I tested the, the spirits in my own heart? Where have I been deceived? Again, we so often, we want to we point. It's, it's fun to point fingers, right? Because it's not on us. Oh, if they had done, this person said this, that they're not walking in the light, all the different things. But if we actually would take the scripture and say, we need to test the spirits. I need to test, is this my flesh? Or is this a spirit? I, I, again, there, there's this tension that we, that we have to fight in our heart. And this is what sanctification is all about. It's leaning into the tension again and again and again and allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to us and say, there's something here. You haven't forgiven in this area. There's, there's, there's a cynical spirit that's rising up. There's critical this that's coming up. It's pride. And, and the enemy wants to, to come, even, even as I'm speaking, I can just feel it right now. The enemy wants to come and shame, and shame, and shame. Yeah. Yeah, because you're not good. That's why you're feeling this. You're not where God wants you to be. All, and, and the chatter just begins. But we have to fight. We have to fight. We, we, again, we want to point at the deceivers out here, but... How many of us are deceived and don't even know it because we haven't asked the Holy Spirit? Psalm 24, three through five. Who may climb the mountain of the Lord? Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Only those with hands and hearts that are pure who do not worship idols and never tell lies, they will receive the Lord's blessing and have a right relationship with God and their Savior. Again, when we, when we put on all these things, we, we're cleaning our hands. So on the outside, everything looks good. But have we addressed the heart? Is our heart, is our heart pure? We must choose to live righteous and follow the word of God and how it tells us to live. But if we don't allow the Holy Spirit to deal with our hearts daily, we're just masking our hearts with fruits that will eventually become rotten. Like how many, how many fruits have you pulled off of this person's podcast or this person's Instagram feed? or all these different things. Like I, I struggle with this because like I have a saved folder on my Instagram that I have never actually gone back to look at. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't like things usually, but I usually save it. If I, if I really like it, I save it. And I go, oh, I'll come back to it later. No, haven't done, never, <laughs> I've never done it. Or I'm going to put this in this folder, that folder. And it's sort of like, I'm just, I'm just eating all the fruit. I'm just taking in all this stuff. And like, I hope it changes me. Like, oh, if I, if I just save this away, like that's like saving it on your, your Facebook or your Instagram does not mean it's changing your heart or being saved in your heart, right? I got a lot of nods on that. I feel like I'm not the only one guilty of doing this, so. <laughs> I love when God, I love when God uses me. I love, I love when he uses us to, to serve others, right? But have we repented for the way that we've treated people closest to us? I love when God shows up on Sunday, but have I repented for ignoring his voice all week? I love singing about Jesus, but have I repented for gossiping? This is, this is my, my hopeful guarantee for each and every one of us. 
I said hopeful sarcastically because so often this, this does not feel like hope. But if we allow the Holy Spirit in our lives to change our hearts and we're listening to him daily, we are going to fail. We are going to fail. But I have learned more from failure than I've ever learned from my success. I have learned more from screwing up than I've ever learned from doing it exactly right. We grow when we fail. See, when we fail, we think we're falling backwards. We think we're, oh, you know, I screwed this up again. But with the Holy Spirit, we're actually failing forward. Because I'm leaning in to the tension. I'm leaning in to the possibility of failing in this moment, but I'm leaning in with the Holy Spirit. And so if I fail, I'm going forward. I'm, I'm walking with him. It's, it's, it's almost like you can, you can see it as this compounding. I, my dad actually sent me this video this last week and I, I think it's, I think it's awesome, but there's this lady that's like, I'm going to give you a penny that will double for the next 31 days, or I'm going to give you $3 million right now. And many of us, we take the 3 million right now. Many of us would take that. Yeah. Lay hands on me. Let it, let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. But if we would allow the daily consistent work of the spirit in our hearts and lives, and it doubles and it doubles and it doubles at the start. It, it doesn't double too much. After just a few days, you get, you know, you're at the like $5. Like it's like 10 days, $5. And then it, it grows a little more. It grows a little more. But by day 30, you're right around the same as, as the, the 3 million that was given after 30 days. But on 31, it's twice as much. Like there, there's this great, there's this great song. I don't know what happened to it. I, I can't really find it anymore, but it's that you and I, we've got history. We go way, way back. We go way, way back singing about the Lord. We've got history. I want to walk in a place where I have history with the Lord. That when I begin to pray, heaven stops. It says, that's my son right there talking to me. Rather than the, the moments of like, uh, I'm only praying in the moments when I need something. And again, we've got a good, good father. He's not hanging out in heaven going, oh, what is, what does this guy need again? You know, like that's not our father. That's not our Lord, right? But when we begin to, to walk with him and allow him to use us and every single day, we lean into the tension. We lean into the moments of there's, there's something broken in my heart, Lord. I need to work on this. God, God, I'm, I'm struggling in this area. I, I, I know that your spirit, like, help me in this moment. Help me, Lord, like, walk me through testing. Walk me through these moments so that I can continue to grow. As I, as I keep going day in and day out, it gets easier. It gets easier to pull back on that bow. It gets easier to step out in faith because I've already done it many, many times and I've failed and I've failed and I've failed. But God's been with me and I've grown stronger because of it. The Holy Spirit is doing a work in my heart. This is, this is what sanctification is all about. This is, this is what working out our salvation is all about that we would walk in the will of the Lord, which is to become like him every single day. And, and we're going to talk about on ramps in the, in the coming weeks. And we're going to, we're going to talk about practices and, and things that we can enter into. But if we are walking without the Holy Spirit addressing our heart every single day, and we just do all of this stuff, it will change us for a season. but there will still be a work that needs to be done in our hearts. Like, I don't want us to fabricate this safe environment for us to grow in because that's not the reality that we live in. We need to 
walk in testing every single day if we want to grow. We need to lean into the Holy Spirit and just ask him, why am I feeling this? Why do I sense this? And again, it's not this like boogeyman, like, you know, it's what they did. No, God, what, my heart, I'm feeling this. What is it? Where, where have I gotten off? Where am I in the wrong? Where do I need to grow? Because as a body, we're not going to grow if we're just pointing out what everybody else is doing. Where's the unity there? But man, if I, if I will allow the Holy Spirit to address my heart, things are going to shift. Things are going to change. It's that cycle. I'm going to hear from the Lord. I'm going to listen. I'm going to obey. I'm going to step out in faith. I'm going to be tested. And I'm going to repent when I made a mistake. And then I'm going to stand on that and continue to move forward and do it again and do it again and keep becoming more like Jesus. Gustavo, if you want to come in. I think it's a tragedy of the church, specifically in like Pentecostal movements, that we become more fixated on the gifts of the Spirit rather than the fruits of the Spirit in our hearts and lives. Like again, we're not pointing fingers. I can point the finger at myself. But man, I've walked in the gifts of the Spirit and my heart's disgusting. Like, God's not going to take away the gift that he's put upon your life. And, and how many times have we seen that in the church where amazing leaders fall? And it's so easy to just lean into God and lean into the Holy Spirit to to get access to the gifting, to, to be able to be prophetic and to lay hands and see the sick healed. Like it's, it, we can focus so much on that and then our hearts not change. I mean, I mean, it's even in scripture where, where it says that, you know, God, we, we prophesied in your name. We casted out demons in your name. We did all of this stuff. And the Lord said, away from me, I never knew you. This is how we get to know him. This is how we get to grow in him. It's, it's with the Holy Spirit every single day addressing our hearts so that we can keep growing, that we can keep getting better, that we can keep saying yes. I tell my kids this all the time. You're a servant. That's my last name. You're a servant. And servants do hard things. I say this to them all the time. With, I said it to Nikki the other day with tears in his eyes because he, he just screwed something up. I said, hey, we do hard things. Why do we do hard things? And like, Because it makes us better. It makes us stronger. And it makes us smarter. We have to walk with the Holy Spirit every day. We have to keep our flesh in check. We have to get in the habit of stopping ourselves when the works of the flesh begin to rise. We gotta ask, what do I need to repent of? What, what do I need to surrender to the Lord? Why am I reacting this way? Why do I feel empty and alone? Show me, show me the root of this thing that's growing in me right now. Help me heal. Help me walk and overcome again and again and again. My, uh, my kids, they love the, they love the color. And, uh, their, their ages are, help me, seven, six, five, two, almost three. It's awesome. Thank you. And they love to the color. And uh, this was several, several weeks ago, months ago, whatever. And my wife had actually gone out and bought like some like legit canvases from, from, from somewhere. And they got the paints out and, you know, they're doing the thing. And it's, it's really funny because, especially with Levi, because he's the youngest, he'll start painting. 
And we come up and we're like, oh, good job. And he's just like, yeah, yeah, you like it? Like, this is great, yeah. And then it ends up being this giant brown blob after a while. Because he's just excited that you're like, that, that we're just like looking at him. And we're like, oh, dude, th- this is great. And he's like, awesome. But man, if I, if I took that to some, you know, art exhibit or some museum or some whatever, like everyone would be like, what is this? Like, what are you, this isn't art. And I've got my other kids, you know, like Allie and Zoe, they're, they're painting these beautiful flowers and they're, they're doing all this stuff, you know, and they're, you know, they're, they're six and seven years old, you know, and they're like, oh, that's great. That's awesome. And they're, and they're just, they just keep going like, oh, thanks. This is, this is fun. They make a mis- make a mistake and we show them like, oh no, you can, you can, you can repaint it here. You can change the color. You know, you can make it look different. And here's what's great. Like, I think God is this way. But just the, the action of trying and, and, and creating and, and, and doing whatever God wants you to do, he still takes your artwork and he puts it up on the fridge. Right? Because they tried. Like, Levi tried to make a flower. It was not a flower. But you know what? I was proud of him because he tried, because he stepped out, because he's like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this thing and my dad loves it and he's going to keep doing it and he's going to keep getting better. And the world, again, may say, like, that's ugly. That's not right. Like, look at your heart. You think you can live this way? No. I know who you used to be. I know how long you've been doing this or not doing this with the Lord. But God's like, you know what? No, I'm putting it on the fridge because I'm proud of you because you tried and you failed, but you failed with me. And I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to forsake you. I'm going to continue to walk with you and see you grow and see you get better. I'm going to see you keep pulling back on this bow. And in the moment that I need you to to come through, you're going to come through because you've been practicing. You've been leaning on me. The moment that that I speak to you and tell you to step out in faith in this way, you're going to be ready because you've been listening to his voice all week long. And you you know without a shadow of a doubt, that was my God. That was the Holy Spirit. I'm stepping out today. I'm going to be used by you today. But how many of us are living in doubt because we haven't tried, because we think it has to be a certain way? We think our faith and our walk has to check all the boxes and thus saith the Lord, it has to be this way or that way. But no, I just want you to hear my voice and obey. I've failed. I've learned from that failure. I'm not just dressed like a hunter, but I am. I'm not just dressed. I'm not just covering myself with this fruit, but that is, that's the fruit of the Spirit moving in my life. Can we all stand?